Now, it's time for us to go back to school. Now I know just as well how difficult homeschooling was when the first lockdown hit. And it's been equally as hard sending my daughter back to school. However, Farringdon-born and bred Ashley Bates has created the Shed School to help. A few months ago, he was on the show and he came on to explain how he was helping children learn during term time. But now he wants to help even more. And I'm just loving this theme tune, Ashley. It's so good. It's so Thank good. you so much. It's the key <laughs> to success. Uh, every catchy theme tune. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to have a good theme. You've got to have you a good You really theme. do. You really do. Look, it's <laughs> lovely to have you back on. It really has. My Thanks goodness. You've really made the most of the last few months and, and certainly helping children as well. You must feel very proud and, and actually rewarded. Yeah, it's been, you know, it's been difficult for everybody, hasn't it? It's been up and down. It's been a very strange year. Um, and particularly for the younger generation, it's been really hard. Kind of school closing, mm. uh, going back home, having been home taught. Um, anxiety levels are, are crazy at the moment, and so it's been it's been difficult. But yeah, we've kind of um, the sheds created something that's helped a lot of children. Well, it really has, and you didn't know when you created this at the start actually how much it would help and what a difference you know it would make and continue to make because things are moving on and maybe there's a, a shift of focus because of the less lessons that you've learned. But if you do go back to the beginning, just give us a, the the idea behind it for people that haven't heard and don't know about the Shed School? So um, back in March when schools closed, I work as a primary school teacher in, in London now, obviously originally from Farringdon, um, but I was really worried about what was going to happen with the children's education. Lots of schools said, no, right, we're chatting, and it was a bit of a panic of what we're going to do, how we're going to roll out education at home. Um, so I thought I'd turn my kind of very small brick built shed into a, a basically a tiny TV studio where I could broadcast lessons yeah. um, and started off just doing these online on Facebook on YouTube to friends and family and it kind of it spiraled from there and we then kind of built up thousands of people across the country and the world watching these kind of English and maths lessons that I was just rolling out from my little tiny shed. Yeah. And uh, I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, as you say, it's spiralled not just throughout the country, but across the world. I mean, th these are things that you could never predict, really, when you start something like a shed school. <laughs> no, it was uh, it was just a little idea that I had thought, oh, well, this would be quite fun. It'd be quite interesting. And I'm sure it would help a couple of families. And yeah, and then it kind of people shared it and then some more people shared it. And then before you know it, it's on kind of big kind of public groups and mm. people are recommending it and then uh, yeah uh, kind of on um on t television and some other papers have picked it up and things so yeah it was it was amazing it's kind of um it's now got a real community behind it which is brilliant yeah. well it, it certainly has but i mean what was it like reaching out and teaching other children from you know various different corners of the world uh, for me being a teacher it just felt like i was doing what my job was anyway uh, just kind of doing what I do best, teaching people. Um, but it was lovely to see all these people connecting, kind of, hey, it's Sophia in Spain, and we've got Greg here in Australia watching. And Hang on a minute, God, this is a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. Um, and what was really lovely was the feedback that parents were giving, saying, look, thank you so much for giving us an hour back. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Our kids can sit in front of you and actually engage in something rather than just we're doing a worksheet at home. It was that kind of structure and engagement that, uh, that was lacking at the time. I, I just see you as the Joe Wicks of education. Ashley. Uh, but yeah, that's just quite nice. Yeah, I'll you, take that. You, you really are the Joe Wicks of education. But, but actually what it gave children as well, and I think, you know, for any parent that said that they, you know, they completely nailed the homeschooling, I've, I, th I mean, I'm sure there are a few, but the majority of parents would be lying if they said that they enjoyed it and they nailed it because actually um, I think the majority of parents probably learnt more during homeschooling because, um, you know, there were things that, that parents had no idea about because let's face it, curriculums are very, very different from when we were at school but but actually what you provided as well was that routine of that structure you know albeit for an hour a day but that was an important bit of routine and structure with it within and the day for the children absolutely it was being that uh, other face really and that's what teachers do so well it's it's giving the children somebody else of authority 
to mm. tell them what to do um, and to kind of help them and guide them uh, in their life, not just educate, but also giving them the, those life lessons that they need so much of as well. Yeah, they, um, they do need somebody else and they do need that sort of that, that figure of authority, somebody that they, they know knows the answers to things because my daughter questions everything that I say and doesn't believe me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of in terms of that, you know, homeschooling is incredibly difficult. Yes, and I think that's you're totally right. Parents, parents are parents, and yeah, your children do push what you say and kind of test what you do. Um, uh, and yeah, the teacher's role is to kind of say, look, hey, trust your parents, and also here's some more information as well, and believe us as well yeah. too. <laughs> and and uh, in terms of how you structure the lessons and how you kind of put them together, is it just you know normally you sort of co- you know pretty much take a lesson that you would normally be teaching in in primary school and just apply it to the shed school with a bit of extra fun. That's pretty much it, yeah. It's trying to make it as fun as possible. Obviously, with the shed school, it's been quite difficult because you don't have that interaction that you have in class. Normally, you can kind of question and you can kind of get up, get children up and do things where that's removed when you're doing something online. So it has to be um, as fun as possible and normally relies on me being a little bit more silly um, uh, to get the point across. Mm. Um But certainly that interaction kind of comes with the children sending stuff in. We had lots of so many emails of work that people had completed. And I was especially over the first part of lockdown and the summer was marking that work, sending it back to them, giving them positive feedback, saying that this is brilliant. Do more of this and you could do more of this to extend your writing. Um, So, yeah, so it was it was it was difficult, but it, it, it was working and lots of people were kind of getting lots from it, which was brilliant. In doing this, you've learnt lessons yourself. You've learnt lessons about the children's needs and uh, perhaps there's a shift of focus for the Shed School right now, which we'll find out about in just a moment. Uh, My guest is Ashley Bates, uh, Farringdon born and bred. He's a primary school teacher and he is the creator, the founder of the Shed School, as you've been hearing. It's uh, been helping children right across the world to learn, to continue learning during the pandemic. We'll return to our conversation in a moment. That's you too, and beautiful day. It's BBC Radio Oxford. Let's go back to my first guest this morning, Ashley Bates, found in Born and Bred, and he is the man, the primary school, uh, school teacher behind the Shed School, which uh, is literally the Shed School has gone all over the world. Ashley's been uh, helping children learn during the pandemic, given them that structure and that routine for an hour every single day, and it's it sort of taken off beyond, I would imagine, Ashley, your, your wildest dreams. But I'm just going to play the uh, theme tune once again. I love this. So I'd give this another blast. <laughs> I mean, it's like watching at CBeebies. You know, it's a theme tune worthy, certainly, of CBeebies. How did this get put together? So I wanted to make, obviously, the Shed School as fun as possible. Um, I love kids' TV. It's kind of centred around that idea that the show could be put onto television. Um, And I wanted something that was catchy and uh, just something that got stuck in your head that you can just bop along to. And... Mm. uh, I spoke to some friends of mine who are kind of uh, artists that are kind of writing bits and pieces, the positive being, um, who I now collaborate with on some other musical stuff. Um, they came up with this song uh, with a friend of mine, Kev Richardson. Um, yeah, just brilliant. It was just kind of, it just sums up what I was trying to do in the shed. And with that, it's now incredibly catchy and it gets stuck in my yeah, head constantly. It's, <laughs> it's, I bet it does. It's a real yeah. worm. But it's have true. you been approached? Are there any conversations <laughs> that are being had about, you know, putting this on, you know, something like CBeebies? Um, there's lots of things in the pipeline and things are being developed at the moment. Um, it's ultimately where we would like to take the Shed School. I think there's a, it's definitely a platform for that. Yeah. Um, kind of like the one show, but for children. I think it's definitely <laughs> something that we could do. <laughs> um, but yeah, we never know. We're not 2021. Let's see what happens there. Yeah, it's sort of a natural progression, really. But actually, I mean, the whole thing has naturally progressed. And as I mentioned, you've learnt lessons, actually, from the children that you've been teaching across the world. And the focus is a little bit different now. So so tell us what's changed about the Shed School and its shift of focus. 
so when I went back to school, because obviously being a teacher, I had to go back in September. Therefore, the shed school had to kind of be put on hold. Um, I had loads of parents emailing me saying, please, can you start it back up? It was brilliant over lockdown. It was brilliant over the summer. We really just want that kind of that Mr. Bates back in our uh, back in our homes again. Um, and the one thing I noticed at my school and speaking to other parents was the anxiety levels in children, um, how worried they were about general schooling, um, all these new rules and regulations been put in place, mm. people wearing masks. There were so many anxious children um, were just worried about day-to-day life and thought, you know what, let's see if we can make the shed school into something that's not just about education, but also about helping young people's mental health. Um, and that's what the focus is for the new show. Um, yeah. We is kind of helping those things. And, and how do you set about that? How do you help these this anxiety that children are feeling right now so we've looked at how we can kind of how we can help what 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 type of things do summarize um helping mental health well it's helping the mind helping the body and helping the soul as well it's breaking it down into those three parts and the the new show kind of tries to tick all three of those Mm. um and by highlighting things like resilience and what it means to be a friend and ju- just just making it an, a nice place for people to come together and just chat about their worries. I think that's what it's really been doing is making a platform for children to, to come forward and say, hey, yeah, I'm a little bit worried about what's happening and I'm happy to talk to you about it and we can all talk about it together. Yeah, I, I think that years and years ago, parents could hide things from children, but yeah. Children are just so aware of everything else, that, you know, everything that's going on in the world. And they, they do carry it on their shoulders so much, don't they? And that's the very, very difficult thing about, you know, growing up in today's world. You know, you can't be shielded from anything as a child, you know. And in one sense, you know, that is, it's it's incredibly, you know, difficult and, and worrying, certainly as a parent. But, you know, in another sense, you know, you, you can't protect, you know, you as much as you can protect your children, you can't shield them from everything because they need to know. They need to be informed about things that are going on in the world. It's it's a, just such a tricky balance. It is it is so difficult. It is so hard at the moment, um, and that kind of social emotion that kind of children have towards things. And hang on a minute, mummy, why is that person wearing a mask? Why can't we go into this shop? All those little things that are kind of affecting us as adults are really affecting our children as yeah. well. Um, so yeah, the shed's trying to. Well, I think we're doing it. We're creating a a show that can help with those type of things. What would you say to parents actually that are going through this and witnessing this? And and seeing the anxiety, you know, there's heightened levels of anxiety. There's levels of anxiety that they perhaps have never seen in their children before. What what's your advice to parents right now? I think the ultimately, uh, I think the best thing is to just to, 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 uh, to help educate the child. So by saying things that it, it's okay to feel anxious, it's okay to be feeling a little bit worried. I feel like this. This is not a new feeling for. For anyone, uncertainty is something that we can never predict, uh, as anyone can predict what's going to happen mm. next week, week after, in a year's time. We don't know. Um, and as children think that adults know all the answers, we yeah. don't know all the answers, but the only thing we can be is prepared for now. Um, and that's like having a positive outlook on things and going, hey, it's okay, we've got these things around us uh, and not pushing worries onto them too heavily yeah and it's just you know everything's a little bit unknown at the moment i mean on friday my daughter was at school one minute and then she had to be picked up the next and now she's self-isolating for two weeks because there was a a a covid positive test within within her school and, and her year group was affected by that and that's the problem isn't it because so many children are being affected you know by that kind of situation and then of course they worry that whoever that might be that's been affected by covid19 they worry about that person and they wonder, you know, there's this sort of sense of, of, of uncertainty because, you know, particularly as my, my daughter's a very, very small school and she adores her friends. She adores her teachers. She loves to be in that environment. And, you know, suddenly, you know, um, you, your, your routine once again is taken away. And, yeah. of course, that just adds to the anxiety for each and every child, no matter what. I had a child speak to me last week and say, Mr. Bates, I'm worried I'm going to see my grandparents next week and I'm worried I'm going to kill them. And I said, look, you, and this is coming from a five-year-old, yeah. and you're like, oh, 
God, like that is so difficult to take on board and to deal with. But I kind of, I just had to say, look, that's not what's going to happen. You guys are in this really safe position. Uh, but it's trying to rationalize it in a way that a five-year-old is going to be able to understand and, and, and digest. It's, it's really tricky. And that, uh, giving that uh, support, that mental support, is just so important for kids right now. Yeah. Well, Ashley, it's always lovely to catch up with you. And uh, I, I am very, very sure that we'll be having a very different conversation in the new, new year as you launch your new, new TV show, as it uh, the Chess School uh, translates and uh, makes that transition uh, to television. I'm sure it's going to happen. I wish you a very happy Christmas. I wish you a prosperous 2021 as well, and a healthy one at that. Thank you, Ashley Bates from the Shed School. Thank you so much. Lovely speaking to you, guys. You too.